In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our nomies. This is Christ Church, an Episcopal church here in Vicksburg. It was built uh, prior to the Civil War. Actually, the, the cornerstone was laid in, what was it, 1828, thereabouts? Yeah. But uh, it wasn't uh, completed for another uh, 20 years or so um, due to uh, an epidemic and some fires and some other things uh, and that was, delayed construction. And then it was a brick veneer. The stucco veneer that you're looking at now was added in 1905. It's really a beautiful church. So this is the house of Judge William Lake, built in 1835. It's called Lake Mont. And, uh, the, you know, the interesting thing here about Mr. Lake is uh, he campaigned to be a Confederate congressman in 1861. And uh, his opponent was Colonel Henry Chambers. And, of course, that got nasty. They were <laughs> slurring each other. I'm telling you what. Uh, they, uh, they make Donald Trump look like Mickey Mouse. On October 15th, Lake challenged Chambers to a duel. Yeah, when... But... He actually lost. <laughs> and when Judge Lake was killed during the duel, Captain Thomas Leathers was his second. Leathers was the captain and owner of the famous, famed Natchez Paddle Wheeler and piloted the vessel during the famous race on the Mississippi River against the Robert E. Lee. I don't know who won that one. Captain Leathers held Lake in his lap as he died from the gunshot. In 1896, 35 years later, Captain Leathers was 80 years old and was run over by a hit-and-run bicyclist in New Orleans. You gotta look out for those bicyclists, man. <laughs> oh my god. You need god. to stop. They are dangerous. You need to stop. His head hit, <laughs> his head hit the pavement. And a young man who witnessed the incident held Leathers in his lap as he died. It was later determined that the young man who held the captain was the grandson of Judge Lake. At the time of the accident, the grandson had no idea of the connection between the captain and his grandfather. Evidently, family grapevine did not tell of the, the duel. And that incident is what inspired the song Synchronicity by the Police. No. It's not? No. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm looking to see who won. <laughs> who won what? The race. Oh, the race? Yeah. Oh. But that print is real little. I mean, Robert E. Lee, Captain John W. Oh, Cannon. Oh, it was won by Robert E. Lee. Of course. Robert E. Lee can't lose. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Here is the first uh, courthouse in uh, this county of Mississippi. The Reverend Newitt Vick, Vicksburg's founder, originally planned to build his home on this site. Uh, however, after he and his wife both fell victim to yellow fever in August of 1819, yellow fever is what delayed the finishing of the church. This site was set aside to forever be a public square. Built atop one of the highest bluffs overlooking the Mississippi River, the courthouse was completed in October of 1860, just two months before Mississippi seceded from the Union. So this is the Warren County Courthouse. Now it is a museum. Now, when they built the new courthouse across the street, you can see it right here, they were going to tear this down. But, Eva, Eva Davis, Davis saved the old courthouse building. In 1948, it became a museum. It was the first building in Mississippi to be named a National Historic Landmark. 
But that all could have changed because Admiral Porter's gunboats were throwing shells around that newly finished courthouse. So, the Confederates determined that if they housed Union prisoners in the courtroom, they could save the building, and they did. So this building's been saved more than once. The first time by Confederate soldiers, and the second time by an activist. Eva Davis. Eva. So this is a cistern. There are four of them around the, uh, the old county courthouse here in Warren County, uh, Vicksburg, Mississippi. It was built in 1858, all four of them were. They're octagonal in shape, one on each corner of the, uh, the building. Uh, they're not attached to the building, actually. You can see the columns there of the courthouse. And so, you know, there's a sidewalk leading down to it. They're not connected to the building, uh, but they're on the corner of, of the property. And, of course, uh, they, uh, the reservoirs held rainwater, which ran off the roof of the main building by underground pipe. And then water was drawn by buckets for use in the courthouse, fighting fires, and other public uses. Anyways, this is uh, one of the four cisterns. A uh, nice piece of uh, architecture here in its own right. So this house has an interesting history. It was uh, built in 1831 by Richard Featherston, who was a teacher. It was a single story structure at the time and used as the first school in Vicksburg. Later on, Dr. Alex Magruder expanded the house into two stories. That was in 1850, and then he used it as the he as a used clinic. The as a clinic. Yeah, he used the original structure as a clinic where he treated victims of the yellow fever outbreak. That killed half the population of Vicksburg. In 1869, he sold it to Nathaniel Thomas. The house was later owned by Tom Morrison, who was a steamboat, a Morrissey, a steamboat captain and liquor dealer. The house was built originally by slaves in the Greek revival style and was remodeled using Italianate features. Nice, pretty building. It's got that an interesting history. Gate. That's the original gate. And it's got the original gate, the iron gate. So these are the famous murals of Vicksburg, Mississippi. They're painted on the levee walls between the town and the yeah. Mississippi. But the they, other side of that wall is a canal. They actually depict the history of Vicksburg from Indian and Spanish settlement right from up through from the early settlements up through the antebellum period and beyond and there's the war yeah this, we got uh, you know, steamboats And then the... That's the war? Well... Soldiers? These are still war. All of these are the war. Yeah. These are uh, military hospitals. And... And it's also the... Probably yellow fever. Yellow fever, yeah, yeah. Campbell College. That's the first... First African-American uh, college in Mississippi. Not set up. Not... Not assisted by whites. Right. Yeah. And then the candy manufacturer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Early 20th centuries, I'm guessing. Yeah. And this is... This is... Oh, this is reunion. Reconstruction. Yeah. Okay. And the railroad crossing. Yeah. Look at that. Right under the water there. Yep. Downtown Vicksburg. Downtown. With street cars. Yep, with street cars. Early 20th century here. And there's Teddy Roosevelt. Here we go. Good old Teddy. Hunting expedition.
and the prosperity of the bird. Yep. This is the waterfront uh, park here. You can drive up in here and park. And there's the flood marks. Flood marks, yeah, nice. 2008, right there, and at the top, 1927, 62.2. If the levees had held, which they didn't. So this here is the canal. And beyond those trees right there is the river. That is why we said health thing. Yeah, isn't that funny? And there's a park across the street there. We've got more murals. Right. Oh, you. This is a big one. And a mur Cotton pickers. These are very nicely done. You know, the difference between murals and graffiti is murals are often sanctioned by a legitimate organization, a city, or a historic commission, or some group of people that decide, yeah, you know, we'd like to paint our city's history or whatever, you know, maybe cultural values or what have you. And graffiti is just people that randomly uh, start painting things without authorization, without any sort of legitimate backing. I kind of like them both. They're both art forms. You know, I like murals and I like graffiti. If it's done well, if it's just, you know, spray paint scattered on walls and doesn't mean anything, then that's just vandalism. But actual artwork is nice, whether it's graffiti or murals. O Temple High, O Temple High, we love thy very name. Thy walls and halls are part of thee, toward them we feel the same. Majestic contours grace the earth, and hills on which thou stand. Thy verdant grass enhances thee, the best in all the land. Our teachers, dear, our rules and regulations we respect. The noble principles we find are those that do reflect. The training wrought by thee in our alumni who cling. We'll always love thy precepts dear. To Temple High we sing. Hail Temple High. Hail Temple High. Oh, high school. I don't know who we're commemorating from 1959 to 71. My guess is perhaps the high school principal of Temple High School. That would be my guess based on what I see there. There's Miss Mississippi. I don't know what year that is, but I'm sure it's late 20th century. Leitono. He has a college named after him. Here we come to the end of the mural wall. I don't know. Who that is.
state of Mississippi, the great seal of the state of Mississippi, probably the governor. This is, ah, I was wondering why this wall just randomly showed up. This is Vicksburg's original flood wall, built to keep annual spring flood waters from disrupting commercial activity along Levy Street, completed in 1924. The artists, Robert Dafford, Brett Chigoy, Chase Ennis, Herb Rowe, Gen Benny Graif, Mike Doherty, Miriam Dafford, Amanda Holt, Jill Grissomore, Crystal Goodman, Doug Dafford, and Brad Phillips. The Riverfront Mural Project was launched in October 2001 in an effort to beautify Vicksburg's riverfront by painting murals on the city's flood wall. Beautiful. Jitney Jungle. Prior to the opening of the Jitney Jungle on the corner of South and Monroe Streets in 1933, grocery stores generally sold only groceries and were full service establishments with clerks to gather the items on a person's list. The modern innovations offered at this store made it the first grocery store with the one stop shopping approach in Mississippi. Nice. Ah, the mystery solved. This is Governor and Mrs. Kirk Fortis. In 1991, Daniel Kirkwood Fortis Jr. became the first Republican to be elected Governor of Mississippi in 118 years. Well, congratulations, Mr. Fortis. You deserve it, my friend. <coughs> And we've got train railway cars here, right behind the Railroad Museum, which is right here. I'm coming up on the back side of it now. And this uh, monument here commemorates the campaign for Vicksburg. 150 years. The Vicksburg campaign and siege. You see the little map there. April of 1861, rumors of civil war became a reality at Charlestown Harbor when Fort Sumter was fired upon by southern forces. On May 12th, a Confederate force unsuccessfully struck Grant's right flank at the Battle of Raymond. That would be 1863. Grant quickly changed his scheme of maneuver and pivoted east, capturing Jackson on May 14th. Almost two months later, Vicksburg and its army surrendered on July 4th, and Port Hudson fell on July 9th. The river was open, and as Lincoln declared, the father of waters again flows unvexed to the open sea. If I don't do this right, then my wife, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget, share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.